Hey there, this is Kelly Key, and today what I want to talk about is the HP computer build and actually more in depth into just some of the case modding. Now, down on the lower right hand corner of the screen is actually my computer uh, water cooled blue HP, and I've actually done some streaming with that computer before yes it is kind of old but um, some of the interesting things about it um, I was you know I have some spare parts around here in uh, during the time that I'm kind of just waiting around for certain things and going through my current situation I thought that it would be kind of interesting to kind of go back in time a little bit and to revisit a channel now I pulled up like two other um, YouTubers. One is Bitwick, who used to be Awesome Sauce Network, which is Kyle, and I kind of profiled him in YouTubers that I view, and he actually did a sleeper build of the same computer. Now, the computer that he actually did was an air-cooled computer. It was purpose-built um, for a certain occasion that he actually had, but I actually looked at this other computer too and even though the two that I'm actually kind of profiling they are both totally different in a way now mine is fully water cooled the one on the upper right hand corner of the screen is AIO cooled and the um, GPU is not water cooled now Bitwood's computer is all air cooled, but it had a massive amount of horsepower as far as being able to run some of the popular games at that time. Now, of course, Bitwood's is 2015. The other one is 2019, and they kind of went through a, a process, and we kind of already kind of looked at parts two and three. And then now we're going to look at the final, but we're going to kind of go back. But I wanted to also highlight where a lot of the parts for the water cooled blue HP actually came from. And they came from Performance PCS. And this is a company that I've actually in the past purchased a lot of equipment for. Um, and they actually have water blocks for a lot of different kind of applications and you know they have cases they have case mods and pretty much what is actually going on is is that when you look at those case mods then you start to really realize some of the um, possibilities that you can actually have with your case so let's kind of look at bitwit's channel for right now What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing another build log. Of course, I'm going to be trying my very best not to be super shaky with the camera work this time. I know there were several complaints in the last build video that I did. Uh, some reports of nausea and vomiting as well. So hopefully this is a little bit more stable. I'm using my steady hand. But today's build is going to be uh, what I'm calling a covert sleeper build or a sleeper PC. And what that essentially means is I'm going to be using a really crap case in fact, my dad's old HP Pavilion, which is right there behind me, but I'm gonna be stocking it full of high-end components, uh, you know, all current generation Skylake stuff, uh, as well as 900 series graphics. So now, the interesting thing is, is that Kyle actually says that it is a crap case. And the interesting thing about that is, is there are some obstacles that you have to overcome in this case. Number one, intake um, there is not a lot of air the computer case wasn't necessarily designed that way um, the computer ultimately when it was first put into service um, and this is a case that I actually got from micro center actually the whole computer but none of the parts that are in it were any of the parts that were actually part of that system that system came with a dual core pentium processor 
it was a 2.5 gigahertz and there has been a lot of people who actually have taken that processor and actually have overclocked it and have actually done a lot of amazing things to that but for me I ended up um, not being able to do those same things because the motherboard that actually came with that was not a overclocking motherboard now there were some other hacks or whatever that people were talking about that they could do to further um, unlock certain things so there was more like a software kind of a overclocker or whatever and I kind of dabbled with that a little bit but then I ended up finding a Asus motherboard for it and so the Asus motherboard for it fit in the location and it was actually pretty good with the color scheme as you can see there's a blue pastel fluid inside of this computer there are a lot of bit power or bits power fittings and um, bits power tubing and reservoir combo now um, the computer on the upper right or upper left hand corner of the screen this is more like I was saying air cooled so let's kind of take a look at this <music> Now they did a lot of customizing of it and as you can see they kind of kept kind of the same it looks like a just a totally different case because when it was first brought in you can kind of see where he did a lot of cutting on it and he actually kind of just made a totally different case it doesn't look anything like the case that's in Kyle's video here so let's take a look at how the case looks now this is similar to the case that I actually have um, like I said it's it's a clunker I'm gonna have to take out everything every single component in here is gonna be taken out I'm gonna clean the whole thing out make sure it's all nice and pretty on the inside I, I kind of do want to leave the disheveled look on the outside. I don't know if I'm going to clean the outside yet. That's, whole, that, that's the whole point after all. But there are some limitations with an old case like this. For example, the I.O. sucks. I mean, you get two USB 2, FireWire, who uses that anymore? That's, that's, that's called Thunderbolt now. And then you've got audio jacks, which sure, why not? Um, so yeah, no USB 3 on the front panel is, is kind of a bummer. And I'm so used to it now that I couldn't really live without it unless I absolutely had to. I mean, first world problems after all. So what I'm gonna be doing, oh, it does have a card reader, which is nice, but it's USB 2. But I have the perfect, the absolute perfect product to to solve this issue here. And it's uh, it's actually this Mighty Charger ECR501 from Enermax. This thing is great. I've actually done a review on this in the past on the channel. You can check it out later if you want. Um, but you can see here, it's got USB 3. First off, it's a five and a quarter inch uh, it takes up a five, five and a quarter inch bay and it's got USB 3, uh, just one port, which is really all I usually ever need. And it's got five USB 2, uh, which all support quick charging and then like an even quicker charging USB port right here if you want to charge your smartphone. And Kyle actually did a lot of good things with this computer and, you know, you can kind of see how it kind of came together. Now, we're not going to go through the whole video, of course, but... Um, you could just see that the possibilities are unlimited with a crap case like Kyle was actually saying. So you can cut on it, um, which I have done some videos where I actually started doing some cutting on it. But then I kind of retracted a little bit and kind of just sat back and said, well, all right, you know, I'm going to um, figure out just a better way of integrating a system into this computer now of course it's old hardware or whatever but i sat back and i looked at it and i said well i don't necessarily i mean this computer is like the last pre-built computer that i ever bought and it actually served well and the purpose for this computer was was to um play um need for speed pro street because on the other computers that I actually had, they were not able to um, handle the graphics. So this processor was actually a whole lot better to handle the graphics. Now, 
this was the first computer like I said I got it from Micro Center and then um, when I was running Pro Street and Street Legal and um, there was one other game Sim City 4 and I started getting like a lot of slowdown because the processor the dual core processor was not um, able to handle um, the graphics and so when I went to Micro Center like I was saying the guy was like you know you want to buy AMD or you want to buy NVIDIA and he kind of gave me kind of um, uh, a choice and then at that time um, there was the GT 9500 and so that's what I ended up getting and then the upgrade from there um, the guy um, or right before I ended up getting the graphics card that was in here I ended up um, going back and um, I think at that time the uh, GT um, or the GTX 750 or the 750 Ti was actually kind of on the threshold and I did get that card for a second but I had to take it back and um, but then I ended up um, getting a 970 because that was like the newest thing out there and it kind of it, it all worked out very well now the processor wasn't the uh, the processor was upgraded um, to a dual to a quad core instead of the dual core um, and of course you can see that that just made a huge benefit but one of the problems that was with this board was that um, the north bridge would get extremely warm and so that's where performance PCS actually came in at I actually reached out to them and they had a couple of different blocks now by this being a LGA 775 um, because a lot of your newer motherboards do not have a North Bridge um, so therefore um, there's a lot of integration and kind of the same thing I was talking about in one of my other videos about machine learning AI or whatever progression AMD even though I don't have an AMD processor or anything like that you can just see how they have integrated certain things and Jay's two cents actually talked about it in one of his skunk works builds where uh, he was dealing with his gigabyte motherboard and I know there's a whole lot of drama actually around gigabyte now with the um, power supplies that Steve um, from Gamers Nexus actually talked about I think that Jay's Two Cents just touched on it in a video that he had posted I believe it was yesterday about an RMS process or whatever so all of this stuff kind of gets kind of rolled in but performance PCS um, has a, a lot of different parts and as you can see when we kind of go through their board there's a distro um, block um, they actually have a lot of different cages and interesting enough fan hub stickers which was kind of interesting because Jay's Two Cents in his skunk work build actually did some coverings um, for his um, coarse air fans because he there was a situation um, where when the Corsair fan was going around on the red mist build or whatever and then he put it on his and then when he was looking at it he said well hey I want to change this pretty much and so he cut these out and put them on his build which is kind of interesting how with the Skunk Works um, reboot um, he actually has a little bit of carbon fiber which kind of just is reminiscent of the older skunk work so let's take a look at just some of the explanation of what's going on with this build you know do, 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 do. okay so as you can see it's uh you know and all these all these actually very small cat uh, if, if this if this was a larger cat you know high Hi. Um, you know, he'd be like this high, and he'd be almost as big as his damn case. So this case is very small. We, we barely fit uh, two 120mm fans in the front here, and, uh, oh, get your butt on my face. 
Hey, go away. Uh, they, they barely fit in the front of the case. There's absolutely, like, no room. There's just a minimal, like, one millimeter tolerance to make all this crap fit in this thing. Now, the interesting thing is, is that even though he has the solid front and um, he has two 120 millimeter fans in the front. Now, that's kind of the same thing that I was doing with my case. Um, but instead, I ended up putting, um, I had a water block or a, um, a radiator sitting around and I put um, 120 uh, fans on it in push-pull configuration so there's push pull in the front and push pull in the back now it's not all put together yet but like I said I'm just kind of brainstorming and kind of just looking at some of the other builds and you know it's just always an interesting thing to just kind of see what else is out there and see if you could probably integrate some of that into your current build and he's done an exceptional job where this case doesn't look anywhere like the case that um, that Bitwit is actually doing or the case that I actually have, which that's kind of the way that this case started out, even though the front was a little bit different. But most of the HP Pavilion cases, it's kind of like the, the, the rest of it's the same, but then the front panel is actually kind of just a little bit different so let's see what bitwit is actually doing with his computer a one ah! all right i'm done being creepy i guess i'll take the power supply out next be gone Le now the interesting thing about this case too and as you can see in this case here over here this pavilion he actually took the power supply from the top and actually put it at the bottom and you can just kind of see where um, things are really coming together for him and because um, this is actually how the case originally looked and as you can see the power supply was at the top but then like I was saying he um, made it where it was at the bottom and actually gave a I mean it looks really modern with an industrial kind of a situation with all of the visible um, uh, components to it with the brushed aluminum front and it just really really looks good so let's kind of jump back it's, into this it's been uh, it's been crazy figuring out how to get it all jammed together in such a tiny space uh, I think we succeeded because it works so anyways uh, Thanks for sticking around this long, and uh, I know it takes me a long time to get up videos, so I really appreciate it when people actually stick around and don't unsub or, you know, whatever. And I think we should probably go take this to my brother-in-law now and get his reaction from it. So we'll do that now, and uh, if you want to see the, uh, the process of putting it all together, then uh, just stick around till a bit later in the video, and uh, you can watch that too. So we'll watch that, but then we're going to run back to Bitwit's uh, disassembly of the computer. Leave the body of this chassis. The power of Christ compels you. Let's remove, let's remove the motherboard. I really need, how do I not have a flathead screwdriver? You know what? I, I do have a flathead screwdriver. What am I talking about? Ha <laughs> ha. It's too small. This is not going to work. Shit. I need something that's really thin and long. I am a professional. And no, I'm not using a ruler to unscrew these screws. What the hell are you talking about? Kyle is really, really an interesting guy because he really does um, get into what he's actually doing. Um, he has a lot of humor, which is a little bit different from, you know, well, actually, it's kind of the same in a, a way. And I don't know um, how him and Paul actually got linked up together but you can just see that it is a a good i mean it's it's worked out for them um over time and um you can just kind of see um just how he's evolved from back in his new egg days so let's kind of look at just some of the um way that the computer case was actually put together 
by about 200 horsepower so it's really good to have them and you can't forget your power plant and that that gives the electricity to the turbines and uh, so we have an Intel Vietnam processor so I don't know why we have it because this is only used to run Facebook and Instagram that's all you need that for you know so might as well just take it out and last but not least we have the floppy doohickety thingy uh, no one actually no one knows what these are for anyway so I just made up my own name because you know what whatever okay enough of that so what we actually have here is uh, an R9 290 XFX well XFX R9 290 I think it was called the double dissipation or something like that and uh, so I think I think it's one of the uh, most gorgeous graphics cards ever made and uh, I think it's gonna look really good in this build it kind of matches the build actually which is awesome and uh, so we got some mod cables and uh, I know this one doesn't match uh, it doesn't have to because no one's going to see it, so whatever. And, uh, and I got this NZXT 120mm uh, AIO here off, uh, off eBay. And I can't remember exactly how much it was at the moment, but it was, it was pretty cheap. It was so he's kind of going through the parts, and eBay is actually a pretty good, um, especially when you're um, getting like older parts or whatever I found that it was actually good even though now there is an extreme markup on a lot of the parts or whatever so let's jump back into Kyle and kind of see just where he's actually at with this build I do everything for you suck ya suck ya shit y'all this looks bomb yo how do you do it how do you do this all right Oh, that was scary. Uh, nicked some of the rubber on the uh, the cables there, but none of them reached any wire, so I think we're good on that end. If the 24 pin cable on this power supply wasn't able to detach to uh, 20 and four, I probably wouldn't have been able to route it through that little tiny opening. Now, the one thing that I did find out about this case after I started cutting on it, kind of like this uh, gentleman over here in the upper left-hand corner, is is that the case actually has a little bit of room um, and if you have custom cables then you don't necessarily have to run it through all of this to kind of hide the cables because computer cases back in the day did not have the ultra convenient kind of a back panel um, and when I say the back panel there is a space in between the motherboard tray or the motherboard, uh, the wall behind the motherboard, and the back of the case. And generally, there's somewhere about an inch or more, sometimes less. Sometimes some case manufacturers actually do some innovative things where they'll swell out certain parts to kind of make a kind of design to give you a little bit more room. But if we've seen how that has actually... Um, uh, gotten better over time you have a little bit more room so that therefore you don't have to do like what a lot of us had to do back in the day which was uh, kind of jam all of the cables in there and then try to close it, it down or whatever but when you kind of cut the case then you kind of start seeing that there is some other ways of actually routing the cables so let's go back to what Kyle is doing Right there, so that's that's that worked out. Again, this isn't meant to be a pretty build, so I've got these nasty stock cables, the ketchup and mustard. It's okay, we're gonna make it. We'll make it work. It ain't meant to be pretty. She ain't a looker. And then I think I'm just gonna put it in slowly. I'm always gentle. Come on, go, push. Now the one thing about this case, by the motherboard fitting in here upside down, um, it kind of changes everything with the case because um, number one, you can put it on the opposite side of your desk as most computers with the um, glass now, then you're, it's generally on the right hand side of your desk. But this computer, the way that it's set up, um, it generally sits on the left-hand side of your desk, but part of 
some of the obstacles with that is is like what Kyle is going to start seeing is that um, where it's pulling air from is up here at the top and um, we're putting the fans up there which is the reason why I water cooled mine so that therefore you're not starving because even if you put a fan on the front um, it's trying to pull air from up here and then you also have the problem with uh, um, your graphics card competing with your power supply so um, pretty much this is just kind of some brainstorming and just kind of some of the things that I was looking at um, now if you've ever ordered from performance PCs then you pretty much kind of know their track record there's a certain process they actually go through um, and they'll sign off on certain things and then everything kind of gets shipped over and it's a pretty seamless process um, I only had like one situation um, since I was dealing with them and I haven't dealt with them in a while and um, you know a lot of majority of these parts that are actually in here um, actually came from performance PCS so um, let's kind of look at just what Push. else Kyle like I'm delivering a baby. Do. Oh, come on. You're almost there. You're almost there. I feel like I'm delivering and and having a baby at the same time. I'm delivering my own baby. That's what I'm doing. Oh, there we go. And she's through. She's through. It's a, it's a PCIe cable. Congratulations. It's so beautiful. Your video card must be so proud. So um, he does do some testing as as you can see he put a um, intake on there and now the interesting thing about the front of this case even though it does not have a intake location that's exposed outside underneath this front plastic um, panel there are there's a way that the air kind of channels in so even though it did not have a front intake and it just had an exhaust there was a way that you could get airflow given that you did not put this like on carpet or something like that where it could not have a good airflow because this case feeds from the bottom front of the, its, its panel so if you put a cooler there it's just going to pull in air from there now there is a little bit of space on the sides but as you can see there's there's little vents cut out at the bottom um, now like I said with mine I ended up gutting the whole front of this and taking out all of the metal so that therefore um, it could get the best amount of airflow and there was a difference in some of the temperatures but that's just some of the brainstorming and I know that a lot of, of, of this is on a older computer but generally when you're modding an older computer which is a little bit different than a modification of some of the newer hardware because a lot of the newer hardware some of this kind of a modding thing has kind of already been handled because most manufacturers already give you some sort of intake so you don't have to try to figure out the best way to uh, get the a, a good amount of air um, to move across your your motherboard, your um, memory, and then also to feed some of the components. And like for me, the water cooling loop, I didn't have to necessarily worry about that, but I wanted enough air because it had to uh, overcome the, um, the pump res combo. And um, I eventually had to put a 120 millimeter fan on top so that therefore it can feed fresh air to the GPU and also the front of this case as you can see when Kyle is actually showing it um, where all of this AIO is at I ended up taking this stuff out and um, actually mine has more of like a little uh, pass through here where it can actually get a lot of a fresh air in so it's not just feeding it from the bottom it's actually feeding it a little bit from the top area here too so on that note i'd like to thank you for watching and i will talk to you in the next video